Hey, this is Jerry from Bliss Studio. And in this particular tutorial, we're going to look at Cinemachine to allow us to be able to control the camera in relation to our player. And if you're ready to get started, let's go. So here we are in Unity, and we wanna go ahead and install Cinemachine. This is going to allow us to create a great 2D camera for our character. So currently right now, you can see that my character can jump and move around, but the camera is not following the player. So what we're gonna do is go to Package Manager, and we'll go ahead and find and install Cinemachine. You can see that I already have it installed because it asks for me to remove it if I want to. But I have it installed, so you'll go ahead and install that. Then once you do, you'll have this extra option at the top called Cinemachine. So for us, we wanna go ahead and then click on Create 2D Camera. A virtual camera game object is added to the scene. Now within that virtual camera, you can see that within that component, we have an option for a follow target. So what we're gonna do is we want our camera to follow the player. So you can see that already my camera has now switched to being over top of the player. So the next thing we wanna do is to look at the lens size. Now we can change the orthographic size of our camera in the cinema sheet. We can scale it out or scale it in. So already this is going to give us a lot of great features for our player. So if we go ahead and click play, you can see that the camera is already following the player. It has a little bit of dampening and smoothness and how the camera is reacting to the, the player movement. So there's some settings that we can update to make this even better. The first thing we wanna do is a look ahead time. So look ahead time is if the player is moving to the right or to the left, we wanna be able to have the camera kind of look ahead of the player so the player knows exactly where they're going to be going. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a 0.5 look ahead time and you can play with that. And then you can also play with the smoothing. This goes from zero to 30. I'm gonna go ahead and just set it to 10. Now the other option here is look ahead, ignore, and that is for the Y axis. So let's go ahead and just give this a test real quick. And you can see that if I start moving, the camera is going to shift a little bit ahead of the player. So we can see where the player is going. Again, these are the settings that you need to play with to see what feels right for your game. If I hit jump, it's actually going to look ahead above the player. So that's something that you can determine if you want to turn on or turn off. So now that we have that going on, we can go ahead and look at dampening. Now dampening, if we turn this all the way down to zero, and then go ahead and give it a play. If we turn this all the way down to the zero, there's gonna be a little bit more snappiness to how the camera is reacting to the player movement. If we increase the dampening just a little bit, it's going to then slow down the reaction of the camera compared to the player movement. So you can see it's just a slight delay. So that's the, the dampening. The next thing on the list is the screen X and screen Y. So if we want the character to not be exactly centered, we can go ahead and adjust where that character is going to be in relation to the camera. So you can see I can update the position of that on the X and the Y axis. The next thing we wanna look at is the dead zone. So now if we want the player to be able to move within an environment without the camera being able to react to it, we can go ahead and open up a dead zone. So in this case, we can do a width and you can see how we have two lines here which represent the width of the dead zone. And we can also do the same thing with the height. This is the area within the scene that the camera is not going to react to the player movement. So now if I move my character, you can see that the camera doesn't move until it reaches the edge of that blue zone, which is the dead zone. So now it reacts. So again, these are settings that you wanna play with to see exactly what works for your game. So there's a basic Cinemachine setup for your 2D game. Hopefully you can use this in your project. Hey, another great tutorial. I hope you can use this for your game. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.